Howdy, folks. Um, so it turns out the internet is a really, really big place. Uh, about 25 trillion bytes of data are uploaded every day um, to the internet. And that's about, uh, so that's that many zeros. It's what, 12 zeros after a 25, or the equivalent of about 125 million TikTok videos are uploaded every day. Um, so that is mind blowing how much information is out there and how much information is being created every day. And obviously not all of that information is going to be really good for us to consume. Um, so our goal for today is to go through some digital literate, literacy techniques to be able to find reliable sources of information on the internet and also to assess the strengths and weaknesses um, of those different sources. So that's what we're focusing on today. So we're going to be looking at the five basic criteria for evaluating sources uh, for anything we see either in line or online or on in print form. Um, so I say five, but really there's just four because the first one's not really something that I'm too worried about. And that's the idea of relevant, um, relevance It's how closely the ideas are connected to each other. So if you're trying to research something, um, and you find information that's like really interesting information, but it's not relevant to the question you're trying to answer the information you're trying to find, it's not really going to be that useful to you, right? So first question you need to ask whenever you see something on the internet is, is this helping me answer my question? Is it helping me figure something out? Uh, and oftentimes the answer is, is no. So for an example, you could say like, I'm trying to research how climate change might be affecting Montana farmers. And I find some great information about farmers in Mongolia and how climate change is affecting them kind of rel uh, relevant, but maybe not really. So again, we're looking at that really specific connection between the information that I'm finding and what I'm trying to figure out. Next idea that we've got is authority. We need to evaluate the authority of the subject that we're talking about. So what I mean by that is, does the person who's publishing this information, putting this out there for the world to see, what are their credentials? What makes them valid to talk about whatever they're talking about? So maybe they have um, an education or a background. They have work experience. They have proven research. They're an expert in that field. That would help bring authority to that person. Um, so we need to be thinking about like, where is this information coming from, right? Am I just getting this on some random blog? Is this from Reddit? Or did I see this on TikTok? Is that probably going to be a really authoritative source? Most likely not. Um, because it turns out that, uh, again, the internet is really big, and I can publish almost anything. Like, I could go out and buy this URL, climatefacts.org, and I could just fill it full of what ever I wanted to. Like there is no check and balance on the internet to say like what I publish has to be true or truthful, or I even have to be an expert in it. Um, I can go out and buy anything that I want and publish whatever I want. So we've got to be able to kind of drill down and figure out who's behind this information. Um, so there's kind of a, a quick list of from best to worst of different authoritative people. So best people are going to be actual researchers and professionals in their industries. Then we're going to go to um, journalists. Journalists generally do uh, a lot of good research, especially if they're from quality news publications. Um, so they might not be the actual scientists or the professionals doing that uh, study or that work in their field, but they're going to be the ones who are asking these people questions and getting information and deciphering that um, and publishing information for the relative public to read. Um, then we're going to go to someone <laughs> talking about someone, something that they don't have expertise in or random people on the internet, right? Uh, so we really need to be thinking about where information is coming from. Next thing we need to look at is purpose or kind of perspective, however you want to look at it. And it's the reason why this information exists. Like, who is pu publishing this information and why are they doing this? Is this meant to inform people? Is this from like a news source? Is this from a scientific journal? Is this meant to persuade someone? Is it an opinion piece or an analysis piece? Or is it meant to entertain us, right? Is this just supposed to be a fun video that I'm supposed to watch um, that makes fun of a political figure? Um, and I'm going to take that as truth and fact, right? I need to be evaluating that. So really, we need to take a look at what is what tendency does the author of the organization have? Are they a comedian? Um, or are they like a trusted researcher? Is this information opinion? Is it trying to persuade me in any way? What are they doing? Obviously, the information and fact representation is going to be more uh, beneficial for our consumption in terms of evaluating is something good or bad in terms of information. Next one we've got is currency. And by that, I don't mean money. What I mean is, is it current? Because dates matter, right? Is this information published recent enough for it to matter? Um, 
is this good for, or, you know, uh, I could look at historical background. What did we think about um, gay marriage in the early 2000s, late 1990s versus today? Those two are very, very different things, right? And so maybe getting some of that historical background about what the LGBTQ community went through could be interesting information, but it's not going to be a great representation of where we're at um, currently with uh, LGBTQ rights. Um, and different topics are going to have different kind of levels of currency, right? If I'm looking at medical research, I want that to be really, really current. Like they are making medical and technology breakthroughs every day versus some things like education or um, governmental policy is going to move a little bit slower, right? So I could look at an education study from 10, 15, 20, 25 years ago, and it's probably still relevant. I don't think things have changed that much, but I think they have changed in terms of like maybe medical research or, or technology research. Um, and then last one we've got is accuracy. Accuracy just basically looks at are the facts correct and how am I going to know that? Um, are they representing multiple sides? Are they being objective in their reporting? Or are they trying to, is this whatever source or information I'm reading, is this trying to, pers again, persuade me with maybe some opinions mixed in with fact? Um, so you really have to take a look at does this info check out? Like, um, And we'll look at some different ways that we can take a look at that. Um, in future lessons. Um, but we also might be asking ourselves questions about like, okay, so this, all the facts are correct, but are they missing anything? Are they leaving any perspectives out intentionally, right? Because I can have two facts that maybe are at odds with each other. I can present facts in a certain way that are going to make you think that this side is the only side that's true, or this is the only information that can be true. But the person who's publishing this may be leaving some things out. So um, right now I want you to press pause and I want you to try to write down uh, brief definitions of these four elements of criteria for information on the internet in your own terms. All right, press pause and see if you can do that. Did you do it? All right. Well, here's kind of a brief overview of it. Um, so you can compare your notes to this one. Um, and I've highlighted accuracy as that's probably the most important one. And that's the one that we're going to be looking at in kind of future lessons is how do I evaluate the accuracy of some information? Um, but otherwise, good luck, folks. Thanks for watching.